So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another Tax Friday, it's a new tax function every Friday. Now in today's Tax Fridays we're going to do the last part of the Amazon Rainforest visualization that you see behind me. I'm going to explain how I did the maxes in for that particular report. So we're going to show you, I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you how to calculate the max of a categories, or a list of categories, and I'm going to show you how to do the max uh, how to conditional for a math using DAX to get the max of a list of stuff, list of values, basically. So let's get started. Okay, guys, so to do the visualization that you see behind me, it, as you see, the highest value for this rose chart that was created using Charticulator, all the stuff in the description below. So we need to tag the data set with the max value. That's the way Charticulator works. So we need to do it, and we need to do it as a calculated column, as I explained on the video on Wednesday. So what we need to do is for this data set, we need to find the max value per state for all the years. That's what we want as a calculated column. It's the same, uh, you can use exactly the same for a measure, okay? But in this case, it has to be a calculated column, otherwise Charticulator will ignore the conditional formatting and we don't want that. So how do I create the max value? It is actually quite simple. Let me show you. We're going to create a new column. Again, it's the same applies for a measure. And we're going to call this max values two. I already have a one, max value one. And then we're going to do it in two step. The first one is we're going to calculate the max value for the list. So max value equal. And then, so where are we going to calculate? We need to calculate the max of the fires, so the highest number of fires per state. So we're going to calculate the max and then max accepts only a column. So you cannot put a measure in there. Yeah, it has to be a column. So we have to put fires there. So the column that contains the number of fires. And now what we need to do is we need to feed to the DAX engine the tables by category. How do you do that? What we need to do is we need to remove all filters except the one for state. All except all except so all except will take the fires table and then we'll strip of all filters that you can put anywhere else on the canvas or anywhere get rid of all the filters and then it will keep only the filter state so for the entire table it will feed the entire table and then say, okay, state as a filter. So state accurate filter, it will, it will give us only this table and then it will calculate the max and then it will iterate for each state. So the next time it will get this table, we'll calculate the max. And then for this state, we'll calculate the max. And for this state, and we'll calculate the max. Easy. Uh, now, we are doing this as a variable. So we need to, I'll tell you why in a second, return and then we put max value just to see that it's working. Do DAX in pieces. Don't do everything at the same time because nobody can do it that way. Nobody. So do, do it in pieces. It will, will make everything a lot easier to understand. So as you can see here, it's giving us the max for each row, for each state. So here is 7,000, here is 2,000. It's working beautifully. But this is not what we want. What we need to have is a tag called max on just the max value. That's why I put this as a variable because we need to modify this a little bit. And we're going to say if uh, the fires, so fires is a measure that is a sum of fires, so the number of fires is equal to the max value. Max value, where is it? So if we, we will go row by row and say, OK, are you equal to max value? Are you equal to max value? If they are equal to max value, then write max. Otherwise, black. Voila. So this is how you calculate per category. Every time you're doing per category things, first thing they should pop in your mind is all except. Remove everything except for the filter that you want to keep that will feed the, the table in chunks. 
in the categories that you want, basically. Now, to do the max condition, let me show you. I did here. So as you can see, it is highlighting for each state what is the highest number of fires. Here is for the Amazon, it was in 2015, here it is for 2016, here it is, and it does it dynamically. I haven't done this manually, obviously. So how do you do that? Similar, but not exactly the same. This is how it works. Um, what you do is you create, again, you need to create a max, a, a variable that will find for all the years that you have all selected, it means all the years that you have available in your chart, ish, <laughs> kind of. So whatever years you have filtered out, do the max for the number of fires, okay? And then it says, if, again, if you have the max, put it orange, otherwise put it green. Easy, easy peasy. And that, once you have that, then, <laughs> Oh, Jesus, Power BI, come on. <laughs> I get the chill sometimes. Come here, baby. So then you go to, the, depending on which chart you're doing. I'm doing the bar chart, so you will go to the data colors, and then you go here to the, it already has the conditional formatting. You will see FX, click on that. Then you go to field value, and then you have to locate the max value measure that you just created. Click OK. And you'll see, voila. You, and you can do max, you can do mean, you can do anything you like, as always. So I hope that you enjoy this wildfire series. If you did, just let me know in the comments or like the video so I know I can do more. I actually had a lot of fun doing it. Or if you find a visualization in Twitter or somewhere else, you say like, hey, can we do this in Power BI? Just send me along and if I have time, I will definitely do it because this was a lot of fun and very, interesting to do oh one thing i said on the wednesday wednesday's uh, video i asked because everything comes because i saw visualization on twitter that uh, it said like the reason why we've done this the person said and i'll show you here it said okay if you think that 2019 was a huge problem with the number of fires in the amazons check 2020 and the visualization is what I think it is, it's not very clear, but I think it is February 2019 and then January 2020. And January 2020 is gigantic, the number of fires is really, really big. And my question to you is like, is that a, a, a suitable KPI for measuring if this is a problem or not? And I am pre-recording this, so I haven't been able to see your answers, but this is my, the way I think. If you, you know, deforestation in the Amazon is a problem because the Amazon is basically the lungs for, for Earth. One of well, the biggest lung for Earth. It is the one that is producing, and not only producing oxygen, but it's also consuming CO2. That's what trees and plants do, which is quite neat if you think about it. So. If the Amazons get deforested, obviously in Brazil, they, they say that some of the fires, let, let's not go in there. For this to be a problem, we shouldn't count the number of fires. The number of fires is an irrelevant metric. If what you're trying to imply, if, I don't know if that's what he was trying to imply, but I thought it was, he was trying to imply that that was an issue. The number of fires have absolutely no impact in the small fires. So if the number of deforestation for each fire is very little, you could have just one fire in one year that ha you know burns half of the Amazon, and then you can have a thousand fires that just burns like you know some square meters. The important metric, I think, in this case, it is the deforestation. So it's not how many fires, but how much deforestation each fire causes and then put the deforestation into a map to see year by year are we burning more and then this also not only that well it takes a long time to grow a, you know to, to recover from a fire a really long time so obviously in four or five years 
whatever is recovering is not going to be good enough. But I would say that deforestation, if you're comparing 2019 and 2020, is a more important metric than the actual number of fires. But I am looking forward to, to see your comments. I, I hope you found the time to actually leave your thoughts of what you thought it was a good metric for this. And um, yeah, that's all, that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you again on Monday. So again, if you enjoyed this series, just let me know in the comment box or just like the video so I'll know. And I'll see you again on Monday. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.